This is going to be a brief demonstration of editing and saving photos in FilterStorm 3 on iPhone. Let's load up a photo. So let's begin looking at some of our canvas tools that are located here under the uh, button with the cropping icon. So let's take a look first at cropping. So you crop by uh, pinching and swiping to set the image where you like it within these lines. If you want to change the uh, ratio of the crop, you can drag the lines how you like. Or you can come here and set it to one of the built-in ratios. Or you can also type in your own ratio, like 8 by 10 or whatever you like. Just hit this check button to crop. So I have rotation tools here, 90 degrees, and flipping horizontally and vertically. Uh, straightening tools, if you have your horizon off a bit. And you can add some simple borders, just drag up the size of the border. You can enter text, you can change the color. You can change the color of that outline or turn it off entirely if you don't like it. No, I didn't really want to add any of these changes so I can come to the history and just scroll back through everything I did and get back to the original. Just tap on it. And let's look at some of the filters. Start with brightness and contrast. I'm only going to be using the top few for this image. Whenever you have one of these sliders on the side here, you can actually just tap and drag from anywhere on this entire side of the screen to change uh, what it is. You can tap on the different buttons to go to contrast. Uh, it, if we want to see the preview on the left half or on the entire image, come, there's the settings button, so preview on left. Or we can do show only the preview. Let's use left. So if we apply this, you can see the sky looks much nicer, but we've lost all detail in the buildings. So that's not something we really wanted to do. So I'll go back to the history and and do that change. So this time, let's do something similar. But instead of applying it, we'll use this button with the brush icon to enter masking. So we have a number of tools for masking. We can use a brush. Oops, it's a tiny brush. Let me just make that bigger. You can also change how hard it is and how opaque it is. You can paint it on. You can erase similarly. Uh, we can use a gradient. There's a bunch of different gradients. There's circular ones, etc. Uh, we have a color range selector, so It'll take the point under here, the color of that point, and we'll apply it to color similar to that. And you can change uh, the tolerance of it using this slider. And you can set simply the opacity. Or we can set a vignette. Uh, let's just go back to the gradient here and Use a linear gradient. Just apply that and maybe just add a little more down here. There we go. Now we should do the same thing to the water, make it more contrasty. But instead of using the brightness contrast controls, we'll use the curves controls this time. So we pull up to lighten, down to darken. 
the added point by tapping this add point button, then tapping anywhere on the curve to set it. You can also change it to RGB from luminance, or you can change just the red values, green, blue, all of those. So again, let's apply this with a mask. We'll just take a brush and drag it along to apply that over here. There we go. And now we'll do the same thing once more to get contrast in these buildings. Go back to the curves. Some really nice contrast there. Apply with a mask. Take our brush. It's brush is probably going to be too big. So we'll zoom in. This uh, button lets us just pan and not do anything to the mask. So let's take our brush and we can just fill it in. I'm not going to be too careful here. Oops, if I go over like that, just take the eraser. There we go. So now you can see it's looking much nicer than it did when we originally opened it. Um, you might want to give it a little more saturation. Or we can also change the color balance, make it a redder sunset or a cyan sunset for some reason if we so desired. Make it slightly redder. Let's apply that. There you go, so that looks pretty nice. When we're done, we can uh, tap this button on the bottom here. This is the export button. Uh, you can select if you want to email it, just check email. If I want to send it to the photo library, uh, check the photo library. Under settings, we can uh, set the uh, max size and the JPEG quality. And we can also scale it at the side uh, at the time of export. If you turn this on, then this uh, popover will come up every time you hit the export button. So once you have it the way you want it, uh, just tap export here. It'll process the large image. Uh, it'll go slower than this on your actual iPhone. I'm using the simulator, which is on my Mac, so it's faster. But it's it's really not too bad the processing time. And that's this demonstration. There's uh, other videos for different specific topics on the tutorial page, so I encourage you to check those out.